Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now. I'm Jeremy Wilkes with your new monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Later in the show, we report from the front line of climate change and see for ourselves how the glaciers are disappearing before our eyes. All glaciers in Switzerland are losing mass very quickly because it's just too warm for them. And we ask, will the Amazon fires really make a difference to our climate? But first, let's have a look at the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. Globally, it was the second warmest August on record, with temperatures 1.2 degrees centigrade above the pre-industrial average. It was drier than usual across the Iberian Peninsula, France, Benelux, Germany and Poland. And you can see that in this map of soil moisture anomaly for the month of August. And look over here, in Canada it was significantly wetter than normal, whereas over here in Siberia it was drier than average. And that dryness contributed to the ongoing wildfires there. Well, one of the big stories of August was the wildfires in the Amazon. But what long-term impact will they really have on the climate? I put that question to Professor Martin Worcester, an expert in the link between wildfires and climate change. When you cut down and burn forest, you're essentially replacing something that stores a lot of carbon in unit area with something like grasslands or croplands that stores far less. And so that is a net release of carbon to the atmosphere in the form of CO2, and CO2 is the main driver of climate change. And so that's how these fires can have an effect on climate change, or at least the, the major way they do. Now let's have a look at the seven global climate indicators that show us the long-term trends in a warming planet with rising greenhouse gases and rising sea levels. And then we'll zoom in on one of them, glaciers. And here you can see a graph of how a representative group of glaciers has shrunk in mass since the late 1950s. So how do we know the glaciers are disappearing? What does that look like on the ground here in Europe? Well, I went off to Switzerland to take a look. 3,000 metres above sea level, high above the ski resort of Col Montana, these scientists from Zurich are carrying out a regular check on their glacier monitoring equipment. Well, we're here on the um, Kleinmalt Glacier. It's quite a large glacier in Switzerland, but a very special one. It's a plateau glacier, so it's located like in a huge bathtub, and it has no actual tongue, it's just flat. Like all alpine glaciers, it's getting smaller. This glacier has lost almost 50 metres in height over the past 30 years. The glaciologists use a simple and reliable ice pole system to measure how the ice is melting. So I just measured at one stake how much ice we lost at this place uh, since last October. And since last October, we lost about 1 metre 40 here. So the ice surface was about here, and it has lowered down to here within uh, these 10 or 11 months. I mean, this doesn't look like extreme, but actually here we are in the upper part of a glacier. So, so this is the region that should be snow covered by now, where the glacier should gain some mass. But in years like this, and actually in all years that we had in the last decade, the glacier lost in mass here. Everywhere you hear the sound of ice melting into water. The reason, it's simply too warm nowadays. We have enough snow. So in the last few winters, we got extreme amount of snow. At this place, we had more than five meters of snow in April and May. So we were actually thinking that this should be enough finally to cause some gain of the glacier again, but it was not the case. So the temperatures in summer were so high that everything was melted and now the ice is melting as well and the glacier is losing moss. Over 500 Swiss glaciers have disappeared since 1850. The forecast is that at least two-thirds of all alpine glaciers will be gone by the end of the century. Well, that's all we have time for. Head over to euronews.com slash climate now to check the facts and find out more. I'll be back next month with another climate update. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.